Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Friday morning trading session. Hold on one second here. While I get you my monitor. All right, so the market just opened. The trading fur is flying. Let's take a look here on the eagle. What's been going on in the overnight. And it looks like they're trading a little bit lower from where they left off. Not much. The market closed right around here. Fairly quiet through the Asian session, a little bit of a decline through the European session, and here we are. So a slight, slight opening gap just above here. We'll just keep a look out here and um, see how they behave. Got a little bit of a channel type formation going on here. But for the most part, we're fairly neutral. As you might expect from a channel style formation. Okay, the Hawk Scalper came out with a quick little first micro macro cross there. It's only a few minutes into the session though. I think I'm going to try to be a little bit more patient, let them sort themselves out. I think I've shared with you when I Trade, I don't usually trade the open. In fact, I don't usually come into the uh, into the office for the first half hour. That's the easiest way I know of to avoid opening range. Okay, well, here come the sellers again. Not quite as active as I was uh, thinking. 
Uh, good morning, Jim. Jim's shooting us some advanced decline numbers. Almost 600 buyers and just shy of 2,000 sellers, so we have about a negative 1,400. And he's saying the DAX is a little bit bullish. And the NQ, not so much right now. In fact, this is a rather lopsided signal. We're getting a first micro macro cross here on the hawk. Uh, the signal is actually going to print up here. Oops, no, it's not. Now it's into yellow bars, so we can pretty much ignore that one. Uh, here comes the eagle now. You see, anything within this range where we're stuck right now is going to be very difficult to trade. We've got this range that looks something like this. Sure, we're generating a buy signal, but there's no way to know whether this is the buy signal that's actually going to take us through the highs. Not yet, anyway. Sometimes we just need a little bit more structure. They will break out one way or the other here, but at the moment it is a tough call. All right, we are getting a little bit more bullish here. I might consider this first micro macro cross signal as a viable trade. If it doesn't slip too far. So what we've been looking at here on the Hawk, this is the same thing that we've been seeing on the Eagle, except with a little bit more detail. We've broken out now. We're retesting. Right? We've broken out of the, the top end of the trading range. Now we're looking to see whether or not that's going to have any follow through to it. Come on, get up there. All right, we're at break even. Come on, just give me a couple more ticks. All right. So a little bit more reliable setup. based on that that breakout and the test of the extreme that was pending and the macro pullback but it looks like 
otherwise there's not a lot of participation to the uh, to the upside look at how quickly that the buyers got stopped there is that all the buyers had All right, well, let's put that back on the shelf. Um, the Falcon working on an early trend change signal here. It's our first sign that the market might be getting a little bit bearish. Oh, so much for that. Right. Perhaps the buyers do have things well in hand. Here on the Eagle, we have an interesting setup. This, again, we've broken out of the highs. Not as big a breakout as we would normally like to see. Usually, I like to see something that looks a little bit more like this, a little bit more pronounced than the retest, than the buying opportunity. Uh, what's interesting here is we, we're getting a second push entry. Now, the second push entry simply occurs when we allow the signal to engage and then we wait for the market to retreat. That shows us the current limits of the buyers and sellers. So you can look to buy above the high of this current bar. Can we cover all the way down here? No, that's a little bit out of range for me. Can we at least cover to the hard edge? Yes, that we can do. So it's a way to avoid getting stuck on the wrong side of a, a signal. We'll see whether we're going to get a hard edge bounce here. That would make for a little bit more of a reliable signal. All right, so here on the Falcon, you can see we're all developing yet another range, this one a little bit smaller. The buyers have had their chance to the upside, so if we generate a sell signal here, I might be a little bit more aggressive on the sell. Oh, Suncom, thank you. My uh, NQ, I forgot to roll it forward. Yeah, you can still, well, technically, I suppose it's the end of the week. It's probably a good time to roll. And let me save this. When you change your contract months, of course, you need to change your settings or it goes back to your previous settings.
I'm just trying to get my things saved correctly. The market's not doing a whole lot right now. Okay, I think it's all good now. Uh, all right, so here we've had the uh, first micro-macro cross signal. We're getting a sort of a rule of three type setup here. Uh, it's a rather extended rule of three. Normally, we see the rule of three develop rather quickly. The big deal about the rule of three when we're taking a counter trend signal on the eagle is that we get that test of the extreme first. Now, it's hard to tell whether this little hiccup right here is going to be the test of the extreme. If we get, well, actually, that's not a bad bar, I was going to say, to get a second push entry on. Let's see, what's this going to cost me to be wrong? Uh, not bad. All right, this bar is probably going to be a little bit better. And before I commit to that, yeah, we've had a couple of signals here. All right, so a little bit late getting in on this particular signal. Um, I'll feel a little better when we get a test of the extreme and a subsequent failure with another signal. That will be a better selling opportunity. Right now, however, it does look as though the sellers are going to take a... All right, how's that? I think you, I had a little snag with the audio there for a moment. All right, so hopefully this test of the extreme won't be too severe. As the market flounders for some sort of direction. Well, incidentally, we had a little late filter entry signal right here also. Jim says he short the YM at 85. Good job, Jim. I think that must be progressing fairly well. Imagine the YM is following the NQ. Just a second.
Okay, so here's the YM. And Jim getting a little aggressive on this test of the extreme, this failure of the buy signal, shorting at 85. Probably picked up a few ticks there. Let's see what else we got here on the YM. It looks like we've traded down to this trend line. Now we're actually generating a better test of the extreme. We'll see whether these come through now with a sell signal. And I imagine the sell signal should print somewhere near this trend line. Definitely a little bit range bound here at the moment. Well done, Suncom. Suncom says he took the first micro macro cross signal back here on the NQ, picked up his 10 points, his 10 ticks. Nicely done. The macro pullback got spoiled by the yellow bar, but Essentially, when everything comes back into sync here, it really is another first micro-macro cross signal. Uh, but they're fighting it higher. I'm going to have to be really patient with my stops, I think. Pretty much color my investment gone to avoid doing anything silly. Jim says the DAX is very strong this morning. It doesn't always pull the other markets with it, though. I know a lot of times it does, and it certainly doesn't hurt to, to watch it. We're getting a hard edge bounce here off of our Raptor. And we're getting a second push on this bar right here. Just as before, though, we're still within this really, really big trading range, right? So trading is tough. There's the markets confined to this region here. Any type of signal inside here. It's going to be very difficult to trade. Cancel that.
crude oil can tend to move fairly sideways today. Okay, here we come with the Raptor again, back to the bottom end of this trading range. A quick little hop through the downside. The big support is right here, 42.62. That's the major stumbling block. Uh, see that? Somebody took a poke through 42.62 and look at the reaction. Just snapped it right back. Come on. There we go. Okay, we haven't touched the break-even trigger just yet, but, oh, I was going to force it to break even. I was going to say that's close enough. If it fails at this point, then go ahead, take me out of break-even, because we're obviously not getting the follow-through we're anticipating. Come on down. There we go. Whew, that was hard work. Okay, our Eagle trade has also found its break even. And I might go with something like the parabolics now. In fact, what do we got for open profit here? Oh, all right, I'll let them. I'll let them work with that. Oh, well done, Jim. Jim bagged 30 ticks on the YM on two contracts. Nicely done. Great way to go into the weekend. Uh, all right. You see this bar right here, the one that was forming, gave me this wick to the upside. I was just about to say, this is going to be a good bar to roll my stop above because this is one of these tug-of-war bars. If this bar fails... The market's likely to head higher very similar to this kind of look right here where if we had been short the market is trying to head lower all of a sudden we get one of these bars where there's obvious buying going on the sellers close out the bar so I would probably bring my stop in right above here now the reason being if the sellers fail to maintain control of the market then the buyers are just going to take it back and run it and very likely say even if I had my stop up here or even up here a long ways away they're very likely to still tag it so those are the kinds of things you want to look out for fortunately um, the market did continue low enough to find our profit target but look at this let's see how far it reverses from here now But a, a couple good trades today so far, in spite of the overall choppiness in the marketplace.
right, we don't quite have a four arrow consolidation here yet, but that might be something to keep a lookout for. We are getting a green bar sell. This is going to be a little bit more aggressive, but it does look like we're near... Oops, ran away on me. I was going to draw you a trend line here. And we were near the trend line, which would give that a little bit more credibility. Would have set it up something like this. If you can't find any other structure at which to hide your stop, I always look at the macro line. Where is the macro line? Where is the macro line bending? And that's usually a reasonably good target to use for your initial stop. And it looks like they would have drifted low enough to find our profit objective there, a quick little scalp. All right, do we have a four arrow consolidation now? Actually, this is too messy. I'll wait for this to become a first micro macro cross again. <clears throat> Even though I think technically it is a four arrow. One, two, three, four. Four arrow consolidation right back here. looking to be a little more selective with my signals. All right, well, this is another eagle signal. We're trading near the lows of this channel. Uh, very often, the best thing to do is let it break out, retest. I know you hear me say that time and again. We're currently against the ATR on our eagle here. So what I would have a tendency to do is let this current bar close lower, and that should be the bar that will turn over the ATR in which case this now would become our signal bar. And it would generate a signal right at the bottom end of this trading range, which is a very difficult place to get in. All right, let's see if I can cover this a little deeper before I commit to it. Can I cover it up here? All right. 
right, so you see now how the ATR got turned over by this bar, so that effectively becomes our signal bar. The problem with this signal is there's going to be some sort of reaction as we encounter these lows. We can't help it. It's just how it is. So there's our reaction. I'm trying to ride out any pending swing. The market could retrace to the hard edge here and produce another signal. The buyers are getting a little bit stronger. Or they seem to be. Uh, the advance decline hasn't moved a whole lot. 650 buyers, 2150 sellers. So it's still hovering around that negative 1400 region. Back to the top end of our trading range, our short-term trading range, which is a little bit more obvious here on the Raptor. So we have a trading range that's looking something like, oops, wrong tool, something like this. Soybeans making a nice little decline today. Let's take a look at the soybean market. 
this is soybeans now on the Falcon, which surprisingly didn't generate a signal through here. They should have produced a signal off this little flip-flop. We did get signals on the Eagle and the Hawk, though, so it's not like you would have been shut out of this trade. Well, the seller's kind of blowing it out here. Um, see our Geiger counter, a little bit more bullish. This is probably going to be a good bar to roll my stop in above. And just get a lot more aggressive. Managing my trade from here if, again. It's one of these situations now that we know where the sellers have stepped in we're short Are the sellers going to be able to recover the trend? Take the market lower below the lows or are the buyers going to turn around and Give them a whack At the moment, the sellers have a slight advantage. And that's because we're making lower swing highs. But that's just a very, very slight advantage. In fact, I might go bar for bar. I'll only give them one bar to reverse on me. So what I'm doing is I'm using the logic counter to know where the top of the bar is and I'm keeping my stop just above the top of that bar. So if this bar turns bullish now, I've given it a full bar to sort itself out. If it gets any higher than that, well, then they're going to tag me out. I got this bad feeling that I should just be holding my stop all the way back. Ooh. Here, quick, come down, come down. <laughs> you got to stick with your plan. Don't change your plan. You got to have a plan in mind, right or wrong. Yeah, thanks. Oh, darn it. Jim says the DAX is testing the upper trend line. <clears throat> well, we'll see here in a moment. Had I left my stop above the high, would that have given me enough staying power?
nope, not there. And then my initial stop was up here around the 4271 mark. would have been the primary support on the support and resistance suite. Mm. The advanced decline getting a little bit, little bit more bullish, about 750 buyers now, only 2,000 sellers. So what's that, about 1250, 1300 in that neighborhood? Negative 1200, negative 1300, so slightly, slightly more, more bullish. <laughs> Jim says it's you're on the support and resistance suite. He says these these blue lines are like magic. Amaz amazing how price is attracted to those lines. So what he's referring to here on the ultimate support and resistance suite are the primary resistance and the primary support, the two lines bracketing the median line. They tend to be the most influential lines on the chart. If we're below the median line, the market tends to have a slightly bearish flavor on the day. And if we're above, it tends to have a slightly bullish flavor. Certainly once we're below the primary lines, it's going to be more bullish or bearish accordingly. You can see we're coming right back here to this 4270-71 region. Or we might see another reaction and maybe the market bounce a little lower so even if i had not taken my loss early and left my stop up here 4271 i would still be sweating this trade but maybe not for long Missed the first micro macro cross here. I was looking out for that one too. Look at that, they just tagged 4271. I don't remember exactly where I was there.
Every time they try, they just keep backing off. Relatively tight little trading range this morning. You can see here is our first hour high and low. And we haven't migrated too far from that. Still trying to get a little bit of a feel for the direction here this morning. Okay, well, <clears throat> we're attempting to break out of here. With not much luck at the moment. Okay, a little bit of a sloppy four arrow consolidation. Normally these take more the form of a bear flag, but we are seeing some consolidation building here. You could throw in a just in case type order that would look something like that. Get a little bit more aggressive on it, I suppose. Now we're coming back with our buy signal here on the Falcon. Testing the whole top end here.
Oh, look at that. They jumped right through our limit order. That doesn't happen very often. In fact, that must be a miss. That must be a misprint. I'm going to have to check that because um, it's impossible to hop through a limit order. No, not yet. Come on, buyers. You were here a moment ago. Should have been following soybeans today. My goodness, look at this nice decline here in the soybean market. Out of the open, generate a green bar sell signal. The band didn't really have a whole lot of uh, direction to it, so I wouldn't have worried too much about whether it was trend or counter trend. Once the signal synced up, however, boom, 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 just straight down, nothing to it. Soybeans very, very quiet yesterday and the day before wow this is a little bit unusual for soybeans they're not usually this sedated Doing my best to try to ride out this little itty bitty swing that we're getting.
come on, buyers. We're into the hard edge now on the Raptor, hard edge on the Eagle. Very close to some trend line support. Well, there they go. They're about to fail and send the market lower on a trend change signal. Well, you can see we're back. Back to the low of the morning. You see, we're, part of the problem is we're still confined to this trading range. And the trading range is looking a whole lot like this right now. In fact, did we even leave this range this morning? I don't think so, at least not for any length of time. So this is the troublemaker right here.
here we're coming with a buy signal now on the Eagle. The market's still overall kind of bearish, but very uncommitted. Now watch, now that I've actually said the bear word, watch prices rally. In fact, if I get a green bar sell here, I don't know if I'm going to sell it or set up for the failure and look to perhaps buy it. There was a, almost a first micro macro cross. And here we are again with our another attempt at a, <laughs> a buy signal here on the Falcon, right back at the same level that burned me before. We don't have a signal here yet. I'm just anticipating how the signal will print. And now we have our first micro macro cross also. And I will take that one above the high as well. Next target. This high of the, the morning session, I think this whole 4278 region seems like a probable target to get in or to get out, I should say. Things are moving along a little bit too slowly for me, so we're going to become a little bit more aggressive with our stop strategy. And here on the Falcon, you can see I got filled prematurely. The buy signal actually printed right up here, but I'm also going to get a little bit more aggressive here. So serious resistance here on the highs at 4273. <clears throat> we really need to see somebody trade on the other side there. Hooray. 
and now perhaps we'll start to see some of these sellers orders get engaged Here we go. We'll just give them one bar. <clears throat> and if this bar finishes higher, hooray, we're going to take it to break even now, even though our break even trigger is not until right there. Just being a little bit more aggressive overall with the stops here. Okay, well that's all right. You know, it was worth a try. It didn't cost us anything on this particular trade. Now things are looking a lot more bearish again. So we managed to eke out a profit there on our hawk and now the market reversed right after finding our profit objective, which it is inclined to do. Yeah, Jim says the sellers are selling hard at the primary support line here on the on the Falcon, and they certainly are. And he was expecting a little bit more follow-through on a move higher. So was I. But not yet. Just a tough little day all the way around. It does seem as though the sellers have maybe a slight advantage today. Hmm. 
Jim says the DAX is starting to lose the trend line. That could cause things to decline. And here they go, back the other way now. Here's that retracement now. Well, we could see them tail off back here to the lows of the day. That would put it around 42.58.59. That would be a rather substantial move lower. The Raptor just producing a sell signal here on the hard edge. I haven't ever uh, followed these through to see whether those signals that print at the hard edge have any kind of follow through. We'll do it here in the in the room because we're in demo mode right now, but we'll see how that plays out. No real test of the extreme. We did pr produce another sell signal on the hard edge here. That had some follow through. Produced a buy signal on the hard edge there that had zero follow through. Sell signal on the hard edge through here it had a little test of the extreme after engaging, but it had a little bit of follow through. So let's just do a little experimentation. Uh, Suncom is asking about why my lines are different numbers. Uh, this green, if you're referring to the green lines here, these are not the support and resistance suite numbers. 
these are actually courtesy of Jim, who uh, programmed these, I guess, a while ago. It highlights the first hour high. So it gives you a... Um, the idea is that the first half hour of trading, the big traders come in and they kind of set the tone for the day. Uh, the support and resistance suite lines are right here. Okay, you said you have a line at 42.62 instead of 42.70. Okay, well, that's probably, uh, you need to check your clock. Um, well, here on the support and resistance suite. You see here, custom time offset hours. Now, Ben should have given a little bit more information here. The lines actually print at midnight New York time. So that is how you want to set your time. So you may need to offset your, your calculation a little bit. If you continue to have difficulty with that, I'm going to give you Ben's email address, and you can just shoot him a, a quick little email and ask him about it. But for the North American markets, you normally want it to calculate the lines relative to the native time zone. Yes, I know a lot of these markets are traded in Chicago, but we're going with New York anyways. We had to pick a time to start. That was the time we picked. And it works. All right, so a nice little decline there on the Raptor. So that signal did have some follow through to it. And now they're just happy going sideways again. It's been that kind of day. Well, you know, it's the top of the hour. It's a Friday in September. I hope the weather in your part of the world is as beautiful as it is here today. The market's not seeming to be overly active one way or the other, so... I think we're going to call it a day. If you do choose to hang in for more thrilling trading, <laughs> um, the market is still very bearish in my mind. I think you're going to have better opportunities to the sell side. Here we're generating a first micro macro cross. Problem with this signal is where do we cover it in case it retreats and produces a test of the extreme now that we're back to the bottom end of this trading range. The best thing to do is still to let it get outside of this range. It may run a bit, not to panic, somewhere after the breakout it will give you a retest and another opportunity to get in. There is the possibility it will run away on you and not give you that second chance, but that is slight. All right, you guys, um, we're going to wrap up the room then. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. I am really looking forward to mine. I got a couple of great plans. Some of them include golfing. <laughs> All right, we'll catch up with you on Monday morning. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.